This segment we're going to talk about the use of pharmaceutical drugs. Now this is kind of a hard one for both Donna and I to talk about because we are both drugless practitioners. We work with the body and we work with food and we work with supplements and we work with the spiritual and emotional components that make the body in a balanced state. And so when we introduce something like a pharmaceutical drug into the body, it changes the way that the body works. So this one is a little bit of a sensitive area for us, but we do know that sometimes we have clients who come in who are taking pharmaceutical drugs and we do need to um, help them by working around them and incorporating them into their program. So we wanted to have a segment today on how you can educate yourself as to what the drugs you're taking are affecting your body because it's very important for you to know that. I stress that all the time with my clients is when you're going to take a drug you need to know what it's doing to the internal parts of the body and there's a few tools that we're going to introduce you to that's going to help you to be able to equip yourself to educate yourself so you know going into it what you're doing. So I'm going to hand it over to Donna because she's got a great tool that she's going to introduce you to. Um, I use an application that can be used on an iPhone or an iPad. Um, I actually bought it because my aunt was in the hospital and was in a very sick condition and the doctors were coming in they wanted to introduce new medications and so to be able to have a conversation with the physicians right there on the spot I wanted to be able to look these up and know what kind of conversation I could have with them. So the application is actually called uh, Pocket RX and again it fits both the iPad and the iPhone but it allows you to be able to put in a particular drug that you're interested in. Um, just put it in into the, we actually put in Prozac because I was doing this as a demonstration, but put in the medication and when you put in the particular medication it will give you the tools that you need to know what types of things could happen, what kind of things could go wrong, what type of things you need to look out for so that you'll know if you're having a side effect. There are times when some people need to take a particular medication. And when that time comes, you need to educate yourself as much as you can to know whether or not this medication is working for you or if you're having one of those side effects that can be a problem with the medication. Because our bodies are bio-individual, uh, that's not taken into consideration when a medication is prescribed. So it's good for you, for your toolbox, uh, again, to educate yourself as much as possible on anything that you introduce new into your body as far as a medication that could give you side effects. Especially if it's going to be a long-term medication. Especially. Now we do have protocols that we work with all the time with people when they need to go on an antibiotic and usually an antibiotic is for a short period of time with a beginning and an end and we can help the body to adjust to it and to recover from it. However, when we're talking about long-term medications possibly for the rest of your life, that's a whole other ball game and when it is being recommended that you take one of these, it's important that you do your homework and understand what it is that's going to happen. This particular um, application, I'm just going to put in... So you can just pick anything and look up what you're actually dealing with. So let's take something that's very, very easy to look up, such as um, Tylenol. Tylenol is something everybody, it's not even a medication, but it's something that everybody has in their home. T Y L. E, and as you type ahead it will actually pull it up so then we just select it and it will actually tell you what category it is it will tell you indications, indications and dosage maximum, maximum dosage you could take precautions interactions with other things such as alcohol um, no major side effects and the resources for this information and the strengths you can take I also use this when my clients are on medications to look them up to make sure some something that I'm going to be using is not going to be causing a problem either. So this is a pocket pharmacist. It gives you some information for you to use to make uh, better choices when the doctor wants to give you a medication to talk about it a little bit further as opposed to just saying, okay, I'll take whatever you give me. That's not necessarily the best answer. Uh, if you can do a good informed consent so that you really know all the ins and outs, you'll have better health because of it. Donna, just name that app one more time. The name of the app is Pocket Pharmacist. And if you go into the application for iPad or, or iPhone, it actually has a little 
a little RX symbol there called Parkit Pharmacist. You can look it up uh, under the application um, part on your iPod, iPad or iPhone, and I'm sure uh, Android probably has one as well. Great. So here's another tool that you can use to learn about a medication for yourself or a family member or friend. And this I actually learned from one of my clients, and the name of the website is askapatient.com. So we're going to take a look at it. Um, at the very top of the website, there is an A to Z listing of medications. And so I've chosen Lipitor because that's a pretty common medication for cholesterol. When you look up a medication on this website, you're going to learn about people's experiences with it. So I think that's very important for you to know what other people's experiences are with a medication. It may not be your experience, but it's just good to have that in the background of your mind. So um, as you read through the comments that are, that are listed for this medication, and as you can see, there are many, there are thousands of them, which might drive you crazy, but maybe reading about five or ten would be good. Once you get beyond the I love my doctor and I hate my doctor comments for the medications and really dig in and really study it, from other people's eyes, you're going to get some benefit from it. So let's just take a really quick tutorial. When you look at the, the, the words across the top, you'll see that there's the word rating. And the, the medication, according to this patient, is rated 1 to 5, with 1 being the lowest and 5 being the highest, meaning best. And then it says reason, why the reason this person is taking this medication, and for this one you'll see a lot of them says high cholesterol, and then you'll see side effects for Lipitor, which are something that you would find on any website that has to do with Lipitor. And then you're going to get to the comment section, which is the person's experience with this medication. And then you can look over here and see if it was a man or a woman who took it, their age, um, how long they've been taking it, and their dosage, and the date that their comment was included. So you can see how current the comments are. So just to, for giggles and kicks, we'll go ahead and read one or two of these. So the very first comment was, my husband has totally changed in the past two months, huge changes in his mood and physical activity. Okay, so let's just information. We're just learning. This one here says, this drug is the worst. I stopped using it after 17 days when I started experiencing chest pains and difficulty breathing. Its side effects are horrible and it should be taken off the market. I do not recommend this drug to anyone. So as you can see, we've had two negative comments, but there are probably some positive ones in here as well. But this is something that you can use to look up yourself to learn what other people's experiences are and that is the point of going to this to this website so that you can go into taking the possibility of taking a drug with better understanding of what you may experience. One of the things that determines whether or not a medication is going to give you side effects is what nutrients it depletes. When clients come in to see us we like to educate you again about what the medication can do and if you need to be on the medication we don't, we're not doctors, we don't take people off medications, but we will coach you as to what you need to do. And most side effects are because the medication themselves are depleting nutrients. So this is a very, very, very important part for you to, to play, and again, the research. And there's quite a few uh, books that we use as tools. Uh, for example, we know that diuretics that uh, people are on for high blood pressure can deplete potassium and other minerals. We also know that Lipitor can deplete CoQ10. So certain medications we already know have a history of nutrients that will be washed out of the body or bound up and made ineffective because of that medication. So if you feel that you need to be on the medication, this is just something for you to be able to, to say, okay, I need to up these nutrients in my body. Here are a few books that I use with my clients to help educate themselves on the nutrients that are depleted by the pharmaceutical drugs they're taking. And here's one right here called Drug Muggers. 
which is a fairly new book, and the author's name is Susie Cohen. And she also has a Facebook page, and she always is passing on nutritional tips um, to anyone who subscribes to her page, so I'd highly recommend that. And then another book we have, this is a little bit older book. This was one of the first books I ever purchased. And this one was written by two uh, pharmacists together. It's a little challenging to use, so sometimes I need a day or so to, to look into what it is that we're trying to figure out. But um, it's not as user-friendly as Drug Muggers is, but it has good information. And so the third book that I use is written by another pharmacist named Clell Fowles, and the name of the book is Drugs and Nutrient Depletion. So all three of these books are written by pharmacists which is very important because they are the hands-on between the doctor and the patient. And so they, they are the ones who know um, this kind of information and you can know it too.